Okay, with the EU withdrawal bill going through Parliament, uh, the issue of the transfer of powers from Brussels to Westminster and to the devolved administrations is at the forefront presently of many people's minds. What's your position on this? Well, I remember writing a blog about three years ago that um, Cameron will go down in history as the man who caused problems for Britain in Europe and he broke and smashed the UK Union. Forget what he's done to the Tory party, that's another issue. And I'm not too fussed about that, to be honest. But what he has done on the European side and what he's done to the UK Union is damaging. If anyone thinks that where the UK Union is today, that's how it'll be in 10 years' time after Brexit, they're not just thinking straight at all. The world is going to change. You have this EU withdrawal bill. And up till now, there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of regulations from Brussels that have been controlled by Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Mrs May and the Brexiteers say, no, 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 no. In the bill, we'll take all those powers back to us and we'll then decide what to pass on to you. But we had those powers in the first place. Can't you think of the arrogance of that? You know, again, the arrogance of empire, the arrogance of establishment. I mean, no, no, these powers are already with us. You can't take them away from us. I'm sorry. You cannot change the devolution settlement. If you do, you are risking big trouble. You are risking big trouble in Northern Ireland, because of the border, and quite frankly, I don't know how to, how to overcome the issue of Ireland. Maybe the two sides in Ireland will have to be in the single market. You can't cr create or recreate a border again. Anyway, and then in Scotland, which is a kind of powerful parliament, Wales seeking more, both of them struggling for more, Wales relying on the crumbs of devolution, one five years after the other. And people in Whitehall and Westminster giving Wales a bit here and a bit there, keep them happy, keep them sweet. Those days are over. No longer good enough. Because now you have to settle the central question, how Britain is going to be governed. And it can't be governed just as it is. Even England can't be governed just as it is. Hence you had evil, English votes for English laws, and then you've got a variety of other things like the Northern Powerhouse. Governments are desperate to try and hang on to Whitehall power. You see, a Northern Powerhouse, you think you're giving power to the North. No, you're not. It's Whitehall who's deciding what to let you have what they think is safe for you to have. So, we need a constitutional conference. And the Labour Party need to wise up. Corbyn needs to wise up. Corbyn is a centraliser, but he's got to, and I support him on things like nationalisation, etc. He's right. On rail, water, I'm with him. But he has got to cope with that within a devolutionised Britain within, a, in my terms, a federal Britain. It might go beyond that later on, but the first kickoff is to get a federal Britain. So he's got to, although he makes the right noise, I don't think he fully understands the implications. You need to have decentralization of power within the four countries. So therefore, we have that as a major issue to deal with and I don't think the government has thought much about it. They haven't thought much about the whole process, have they? You know, from beginning to end. But this is a, as big an issue as Brexit. Leaving Europe might be a big thing, but how to govern Britain in the future is a much, much bigger issue. And the parties need to address that. The parties need to get together and realise 
You cannot have white hall mandarins any longer running and deciding what Wales wants or what is Wales allowed to have or what can we give to Scotland. Those days are gone. You, know, you imagine, if you go back 50, 60, 70 years, as my good friend Alistair Morgan has said, when we gave more powers to Australia, more powers to South Africa, more powers to India, more powers to Pakistan, more powers to Canada, and we said, hang on a minute, but these 200 powers we are keeping in right on. Trivial powers. Trivial powers. Can you imagine when Jim Griffiths was Commonwealth Secretary going to those countries back in the, at the end of the 40s? You can have the power you want, but Dangerous Dogs Act, Charities, Knives, you name it. Such a denial of self-respect for the nations of Britain. And I, by the way, I know I preach a lot, okay, I take that. I am fed up to the teeth of listening to newscasters, BBC mainly, Sky sometimes, weather forecasters, the weather for the nation, they say. Oh, right. Right, what's the, what's the weather for Wales today, I think? There are four nations in Britain. Four. So it's high time we stop this little inverted commas nation. Britain is not a nation. It has never been a nation. It's a system of government. It is a state. And within that state, there are four nations. And it ain't going to be for long that those nations are going to be kept down.